still pick up and call people, text people fast. Amen. And just really get into prayer and let God talk to you through this situation and, and, and get our path straight. And basically what he's saying is treat it like a revival. Treat it like a revival within yourself. And then when this thing is over, we'll all be on fire for God when this, when this thing goes over. So, um, and I agree with you on that. I saw this a couple times yesterday across Facebook, so I pulled the Bible out and I started reading a little bit. Because, you know, sometimes you can't believe everything you see. You can't believe everything you hear. And that's social media, and that's even news networks. Sometimes they, they focus on fear to, to sell more ad space and that. And no people are going to want to see, all right, when I get up in the morning, i got to turn around, i got to see what's going on. Those advertisers know it, and everybody's making money off of it. Some of it may be true, some of it may be not. But if you remember a couple months ago, what was happening? We were in here praying for a group of people in our country, and uh, they were just looking really dire. You remember what happened in Australia? The fires. Had all the fires. <coughs> people were killed. Millions of animals were killed. At least hundreds of thousands were killed. I think it was in the millions. What's, what's going on in Africa today? Anybody know? You might pay attention. No good. Attack from locusts. <coughs> billions and billions of locusts have taken over Eastern Africa. Of course, what does locusts do? If those who remember that, you know, maybe some of your family shared what happened when the locusts came through our country. And they eat everything that's green. They eat everything that's green. You know, they can eat their body weight in a day. Of course, you've got millions of them. That's a lot of green and grass. So that's the food supply for these people in Africa they're losing because of these locusts. And what's going on around the world today? We just touched on it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Coronavirus. Respiratory infection of virus is going around. It's highly contagious. It's going around and it's affecting everyone. Now it's, they, they come to our shores and we're having to shut everything down. Our schools are down. And out of precaution, I understand that because it spreads. And we don't really have a true grip on all of it, I don't believe, as far as how it does spread. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, Verses 13 and 14 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, it says, When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, remember what happened with the forest fires in Australia? Couldn't get any rain. What didn't rain? Just dry. A lot of people say, okay, well, that's where you were at. Sure, but it could still rain. It finally did rain, right? When it was time. Or I command locusts to devour the land. What did I just tell you is happening in East Africa? Locusts. Or send pestilence, a virus, among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And I tell you what, preach, I think we're going to preach this a couple weeks ago. Signs are there. We're getting closer. Amen. It's pretty much right there, right? Those three things we just talked about. God's, you know, His Word covers it. His Word covers it. So what are we going to do? We continue to go down that path. I think it's a way for God to wake people up. This is totally out there. This is that rabbit I'm going to chase for a second. You know, I also put out there that it seems like every two years we have some type of virus or something going on that causes people to worry or get concerned. Those two years happen to fall on the even years, which are election years. I don't think that's by chance either. God may be trying to tell us, you better pay attention when it comes time to cast your vote. Why is that, Lynn? Well, you better watch the people that you put in office that represent you. A lot of times I think people with elections, they just kind of like, it's going to be what it's going to be, and I'm not going to be part of it. But that's what they want you to think. Because they're going to try to save you everything. You paying attention this week when, when everybody in this room was really getting big, and of course some of the politicians were really just stoking the fire and putting wood on it and feeding diesel to it and everything else. You know why? Because they knew at some point they were going to vote on a bill to help the people that are suffering through this virus. And you got to think about it now. You got your airline people, your crew people, your small restaurants, and your events that's going to be going on in these cities, so there's hotel workers. And, 
and other small businesses, they're not going to get any of that money that they were counting on in their budgets this year. It's done. All these tournaments are over. They're not getting anything. Those people need help. Not that they lose business. But what do our politicians do? Try to sneak an abortion bill. I don't think coronavirus has anything to do with abortion. Not a thing. But your politicians are going to try to sneak that by you because you're so focused on what's going on with this virus and they're sneaking stuff. Now don't get me wrong, I have a lot of talent with bills. They stick stuff in it. But that's why you need to be engaged. Maybe this is God's warning to tell us you better get engaged in your political process every two years because what does it say? Sometimes I got to send stuff your way to get you to slow down and think and pray and seek my God. Maybe that's what he's doing. So we got coronavirus. And yes, the numbers are going to go up. We're going to see more and more cases. But also, if you read and hear that just because you get it, you're not going to die. I mean, that's the way it almost feels like now. If you get it, you're gone. And that's, that's the way it's being, to me, portrayed out in the, in, the, in the media. That's not the case. Certain will, like Brother Robin said. How many think the flu has killed so far this year? Or, I mean, it's just it's, it's higher than what we've seen so far with coronavirus. Be smart. Be careful. This was kind of funny, and I know it didn't sound like to take it up, but it's true. Heart disease kills over, you know, half a million people a year. Right. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Chicken sells glazed donuts and fried chicken as a combination. <laughs> Did they care about you then? No, evidently not. So your heart, it doesn't matter. But don't you get this virus because it's just terrible. You know, you're going to wipe out the whole state. Just be smart. Be smart. Part of my cousin's Tommy podcast, he shared this, these verses, and I'm going to close. But I think they're very important too. As a human being, there's at least two things we got really no control over. That's the day you were born and the day you die. Right? We got no control over those. We had no say so in it. I've heard this poem before at, at, at funerals and stuff, and it's the dash. We control that. We control the majority of that. Between that birth gear and that death gear, we're in control of that as we get of age. And that means how we live our lives. What do we do with our lives? How do we affect other people? How are they going to remember us? And he was saying that, you know, now's a good time because you got people that are probably unchurched and has been talking about God in a negative way. This is maybe starting to get their attention. So this is a golden opportunity for us as Christians to reach out to those people and have a chance to witness to them and talk to them. There's going to be something up about what happens. They just got that, that hard heart. But God knows who they are. But I find it funny it's part of the mass hysteria. All the water talk babies going on there, right? You know, it has nothing to do with the virus. Everybody's just so scared not going to get to the store <clears throat> to get water and toilet paper. How about the true water in life? I bet Bible sales have to go up. You think you're really worried you're running the store and get bottles? We got what God got to say about it, all right? It doesn't. Everybody runs to the water and toilet paper. Imagine that. Instead of running to the one true being that can help us all. But, in the 103rd Psalm, verses 14 through 16, and this goes back to what I was talking about with that dash. Just to show you, I don't care how many years you can subtract out if you're good at math between those, those years, the birth year and your death year, the God is just a blank. Psalm 103, verses 14 through 16 says, For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its, and its place remembers it no more. Think about the grass and the flowers in the field. They only go for a season. Well, that dash is our season. <clears throat> it's all up each one of us what we do with that season. You know, how, how do we want to be remembered? And one of the things we want to do in life is to show God when we do stand before him one day what we did in his name. Let us pray. Father God, we're so thankful. We're so thankful for your strength. Lord, we thank you for your promises and your grace. Lord, without you, things like this would just be impossible to get through, Father God. I just don't know how people who don't have a relationship with you, how they deal with the society and how things can get so topsy-turvy, Lord. Lord, we're so thankful that you are our rock. You are our anchor, Father God, that holds us. And, and you love us, Lord, like a father. And Lord, we just appreciate that. And thank you so much. Lord, we just ask you to be with those that are sick, those that are dealing with the viruses, Lord. Lord, I want to say a special prayer for our health care workers. Lord, you see pictures and videos from those over in those countries that have just been fighting for so long, and they're just so worn out. 
But Lord, true to their, their creed and their promises, Lord, they continue to work hard and very little sleep, Father God, to try to continue to help those that they can. We thank you for those. We just ask you to watch over and protect them, Lord, and their families. Lord, be with our families here, Father God, and just, as we said, everybody makes smart decisions, Father, and, and to each to his own that comes in that, Father, and we thank you for a church that loves you and has opened the doors, Father God, allows us to come in, continue our worship of you, Lord. Because, Lord, so some, some people, they would take that from us, too. Lord, we hope that never comes, but Lord, if, we, if it does, I hope that we all stand steadfast and, and strong in your name, Father God, to, to fight those battles away. Lord, just ask you to bless us and guide us in God's in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Just two classes.